This is the ASRock Z790 Taiji and if you have been working with ASRock motherboards before, Taiji is pretty much the highest tier that they put out, except for the Aqua series, but that's kind of a special thing. Anyway, ASRock just sent us over this monster of a motherboard for a very specific purpose, but before we push it into its final destination, I thought let's give it a nice overview because God damn, this is a beautiful board and it would be a real shame if I don't record some stunning footage of it. As you probably guessed by the Z790, this is a Intel board rocking the latest Z790 chipset. This means LGA 1700 and this means all of Intel's 13th and 12th gen CPUs. And because some of the new 13th gen chips are power hungry as well, we got this ridiculously long array of chokes powered by two 8 pins. Cooled underneath this giant Tai Chi designed heatsink, we got a 24 plus 1 plus 2 power phase design. That's a a lot of freaking phases. Something that this heatsink can hopefully keep cool. On the RAM side, although Z790 supports DDR4, this is still a Tai Chi, so dual channel DDR5 it is, with support for up to 192GB of 7200MHz quick chrome buffer. And although ASRock loves to talk way too much about the reinforced DIMM slots and the fact that they surface soldered PCIe slots instead of the usual, like like pin through and then solder from the bottom. Yeah, maybe that does flow better, but the one that got me excited is that you have RAM clips on both sides. I, I hate these like high quality mountings where one side is just like a block and then the other one has like the swivel on it and then you need to press it on one side and then the other one, I, I just hate that. Sometimes older is better. But let's go over PCI. In total we got three 16x size slots, the upper two being reinforced and full PCIe 5.0 x16 running over the CPU. The bottom one is running on a chipset and supports up to PCIe 4.0 in x4 mode, which makes sense because only the x4 part of the slot is actually wired up. And as it is nowadays, there are a ton of ifs when it comes to these PCIe slots, but before Let's remove these covers, which by the way are mounted using catching screws, a quality of life thing. Underneath all of this, we got a total of 5 M.2 slots, M2 underscore 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. By physical limitation, number 2 and 1 cannot be used at the same time, and everyone except for number 1 is what they call a hyper M.2 slot, so PCIe Gen 4 times 4 which translates to 64 gig. The exception would be the very first M.2 slot called Blazing. <sighs> Hyper M.2, Blazing M.2, a uh, Blazing. A Blazing socket supports Gen 5 by 4 with up to 128 gigs. So if you got one of these new fancy Gen 5 M.2s, this is where you want to stick it in. Size-wise, all of them support M.2s that are up to 2280 and the bottom three have an extra hole for the 2260 form factor. And now with all of the PCIe things covered, let's get to the ifs. If M.2 underscore 1 is occupied, the upper PCIe slot downgrades to 8x. If PCIe 2 is used, the M.2 underscore 1 is flat out disabled. And if PCIe 3 is used, the SATA ports 1 to 4 out of the 8 are disabled. And all of these restrictions are really important and you need to keep them in mind if you want to max out your system. And to boil it down, if you want to completely max out with storage, only use the upper PCIe slot and be aware that you are pushing it down or pushing down the potential GPU to 8x. But PCIe 5.08x is equivalent to 4.016x, so even your 4090 will not feel the difference. If you want to max out your PCIe slots with, I don't know, multi GPUs, extra sound cards, whatever, then be prepared that the blazing M.2 slot stays disabled altogether and that you lose half of your SATA ports. Oh and by the way, all of them are SATA 3 at 6 gigs. Oh, that wasn't that complicated after all once I wrote everything down, but let's get to the rear I.O. Going from top down, we got two USB 2.0 Type-A's, a HDMI for integrated graphics, 
the connector for the Wi-Fi 6E 6 GHz antenna, an audio in and out accompanied by an optical, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A's, the blue ones being generic USBs and the yellow ones being lightning gaming ports. They, they, are, they are sitting on a different controller. They are separating the traffic, but I have no clue how anybody would measure if that does anything. But different controller. Then we got a LAN port running on an Intel i219V chip with a generic USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A and a 4.0 Thunderbolt Type C port underneath. Right next to it we got exactly the same composition but the LAN port is controlled by Intel's killer chip. Killer. Killer. All of these words. So this one is running at up to 2.5 gig. And then as last we got two 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports. Whew, let's talk a bit about networking, because it's it's really interesting in here. In total we got three points of entry, the 2.5 gig port, the 1 gig port and the Wi-Fi antenna. In the past, pretty much every motherboard manufacturer loved talking about the killer chip being able to prioritize different types of loads. But now we got to the next level, Killer Double Shot Pro. Killer Double Shot Pro, Killer, Killer Double Shot Pro. Somebody really needs to stop all of these gaming naming schemes, it's, it's getting out of hands. But what you can do is use the Killer Control Center. Killer Control Center. You can use the Killer Control Center and combine the 2.5 gig and Wi Fi port. From there, you can push some things onto the Wi Fi line and more important things on the physical connection. And although I highly question ASRock's definition of what an important type of traffic is, the concept as a whole is relatively cool, but even if they claim a 4.9 gig bundled connection using the Killer Double Shot Pro method, it is a bit of a marketing bullshit thing. The average router has only one gig port, so like 90-95% of people can't go higher than that anyway. And the ones that do, like we have in the office, we have 10 gig uh, switches in between every PC, um, well, at that point you probably have dedicated 10 gig network cards anyway, so although this is cool, it's not like it's going to give you like a huge benefit. Plus, being the proud owner of a Fritz box at home, you can separate your network connections into important and less important traffic, sure you can, but if your Fritzbox decides to give everything to the Wi-Fi line or to, the, to any one gig line because a Windows update is, is being pushed, then yeah, you, you can prioritize whatever you want if you can't get anything. So that's, yeah. And another plus, there is a line break missing on ASRock's website which confused the hell out of me and I needed a lot longer to figure out what exactly they are saying here. So yeah, please add that line break there. Before we finish the rear I.O., there is something minimally uh, special inside the box. And speaking of which, nice. Behind the motherboard we will find the usual stuff. The antenna, a manual, two SATA cables, a ton of M.2 screws and the Taichi keycap. And this USB PCI slot. This is meant to be installed anywhere in any of the leftover PCIe brackets on your case and connected to your motherboard using one of the internal USB 2.0 connections. And the name of this thing is slightly misleading, it's wireless dongle USB bracket. And it's misleading because nothing about it is wireless, but everything that connects to it is supposed to be. So you can connect uh, regular USBs to it, sure you can, but it's meant to give you another two USB 2.0 ports to connect your mouse, your keyboard, your whatever wirelessly or via cable, because let's be honest, your keyboard doesn't need a, a 3.0, a 3.2 connection. 2.0 is plenty and then you have a, a good port free to be used for more important stuff. Speaking of internal connections, we got two USB 2.0s, one USB 3.2, one USB 3.2 for Type-C, a front audio in and out, eight fan headers, the CPU one being capable of one amp, the second one right next to it up to three amps, and every other one up to two amps. And then we got three three-pin ARGBs and one four-pin RGB header. 
But what about this seemingly random 6-pin PCIe power connector next to the usual 24-pin? Well, that one is pretty cool. If you connect that, you will overpower the front USB 4 header to charge your device with up to 60 watts instead of the usual 27. Now, I love this feature, but I'm not sure if there is stuff that needs to be done on the case side too. So your mileage may vary, but 60 watts is pretty damn cool. Other than that, the Z790 has a bunch of other quality of life things, like the auto driver installer that starts up as soon as Windows launches, doing exactly what you would expect. And I think this was first introduced in the B6, no, B550 PG Riptide. I, I could be wrong, but that's when I first saw it and it's gold. It's no Googling, just click on OK, leave the room for five minutes and your drivers are installed. Then we got a Dr. Debug in the bottom with a mini screen for error codes, a start and reset button and the clear CMOS button because the battery is hidden behind this cover and I just don't want to unmount it anymore. Very, very nice. It's, it's very easy and it's just a quality of life thing. Overall, the thing is a freaking beast. Connection wise, we got pretty much everything even an advanced user could need and much more like the ES9218 Sabre deck. Design-wise, we got some RGB going here and there, some LEDs that are shining through, but it is still a Tai Chi. So, of course, we got the usual copper-colored gears and they are all across the motherboard, all across the heatsink. It's, you may like it or not, it's definitely a design that you need to want to go for. But standing here and knowing how every other one of ASRock's motherboard is looking like, this is the most upper shelf that they have and goddamn they did a fine job with this one. But okay, I think this was it for our overview on the Z790 Taichi. At this point, a huge thank you to ASRock for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul with an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good damn way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to buy antidepressants to somehow survive what I am about to do to this beautiful motherboard and it will it will be such a waste and, and, and it just hurts me somehow. Anyway, thank you for watching, but if you want to continue, take a look at the series where we built the octopus. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.